I recently posted a capsule on volume being the enemy of natural trainees gain. And since I'm starting to understand how social media and YouTube work, well, I'm gonna use that popularity to try to piggyback on that and gain some more visibility with another training volume video. Now, I'm Christian Thibodeau, I'm straight from nowhere I can see, I'm pretty much in nowhere land, right? And we're gonna talk about how much volume do you need? Exactly how much volume are we talking about? What is optimal when it comes to volume for hypertrophy? Well, well, to answer the question, we need to consider two different things. First, the number of reps per set, which is one component of volume, and also the number of sets to achieve an optimal hypertrophy response. And normally when you get outside of that range, that will simply be additional volume that does not contribute to increasing the training effect, and that can actually decrease potential benefit for the reasons we saw in the previous videos, excess in cortisol release and excess in muscle damage, that we will still address at the end of the video. Now the first topic I want to show you is how many reps per set are optimal, is optimal for hypertrophy. Well, let's look at this first table. It's a, this is a concept I've been talking about for a while, and Chris Beardsley actually like, also wrote about th that topic quite extensively in the past few months. Uh, it's about uh, the, the maximally effective reps. I never called it that, but it's, I based myself on the Soviet literature saying that uh, after 80% of your maximum, reps have a different recruitment pattern than before 80%. Basically, when a repetition requires 80%, of the force you can produce at that moment, you will get full muscle fiber recruitment. This means recruiting all those growth prone fast twitch fibers. Before that, you will not recruit all your fast twitch fibers, so the each rep will not yield maximum muscle growth. So if we look at the first table, I looked at what a progression from rep to rep looks like when you are using 70% of your 1RM, which would be roughly uh, a 12RM. <clears throat> now, when I say that a rep needs to represent 80% of what you can lift, it's not 80% on the bar, it's 80% of what you can move at that moment. And one thing you need to understand that each rep you're performing, you will create between two and 4% fatigue. So every rep actually becomes heavier. That's why eventually you reach failure. When you reach failure, it means you created so much fatigue that now the weights represent 100% of your maximum. So if you look at the table, rep number one, you have 70% on the bar and you have zero accumulated fatigue. So the relative load, the amount of load relative to what you can lift at that moment is 70%. Rep number two, the bar load is still 70%, but now I have 2% fatigue accrual. So that means the load represents 72% of what I can lift at that moment. Rep number three, 4% fatigue and so on and so forth. So you can see by rep number six, I'm above the 80% mark. At that point, I'm recruiting all the muscle fibers I can. I'm putting mechanical loading on those fibers, stimulating them to grow. So these are the repetition that will have the greatest impact on muscle hypertrophy. As you can see here, we're gonna have six or seven in the set, depending on when I'm stopping my set. If I stop at rem, rep number 11, one rep short of failure, I'm gonna have six maximally effective reps. If I go to failure, I hit that 12th rep, I will reach seven. Now, what I want you to look at is the next table, which is really interesting. If we look at various training loads, we have 65%, we have 70%, we have 75%, 80%, 85%. If you look at it correctly, you will see that with, regardless of the weight being used, the number of maximally effective reps is the same. Regardless of the weight, whether you're doing six reps per set or 15 reps per set, you will end up having six maximally effective reps seven if you reach muscle failure. This means that from an hypertrophy stimulating standpoint, you can pretty much stimulate the same growth from six to 15 reps. A study by, uh, uh, conducted at McMaster's University found the exact same thing. They used 30% of the 1RM 
versus 80% of their 1RM, and they had the same hypertrophy results after 10 weeks. I'm not advocating 30% of your 1RM, you're gonna fall asleep mid-set. But it still emphasizes that if growth is your main concern, you can pretty much pick any type of repetition from six to 15. Personally, I prefer to six to a range between six and 10. The reason is, if you look at a table, if I'm doing 15 reps, I will have eight reps before I reach the optimum zone. Granted, two or three of these reps still contribute to some growth, but five of them are still pretty much worthless, worthless when it comes to hypertrophy, they are only pre-fatigue reps. That's five reps where you are releasing cortisol, using energy, creating neurological fatigue without causing more growth. If you don't believe me, well, put 65% on a bar and only do five reps per set. Tell me exactly how much muscle you're gaining. It's going to be zero, right? So to me, doing 15 or 20 reps per set, the main drawback in that is you're doing too much non-stimulating work simply to reach that level, and that creates too much fatigue, too much cortisol. But it still works, provided that you can keep overall volume under control. So the first part of the volume question is how many reps per set I should be doing. My answer would be for hypertrophy, between 6 to 10. 6 to 12 if you're someone who have joint issues, you can't tolerate heavier loading, for example. That's still going to work. But, but for people who are like, they don't have any injuries, they don't have any limitations, they are uh, not like 70 or 80 years of age, then six to 10 reps per set seems to be the optimum zone to trigger muscle growth. That is with one rep in the tank or rep, one rep in reserve or going to failure on uh, less demanding exercises. The second part of the equation, how many work sets should you be doing in a workout? Now, if you look at the science, and it actually falls pretty much in line with what many of us have gravitated toward, at least recently, that 10 to 20 sets per muscle per week seems to be the sweet spot when it comes to hypertrophy. Strength could be a different animal, but for hypertrophy, 10 to 20 sets at the right intensity level, one rep in the tank or maybe going to failure, seems to be what you need to trigger more mu maximum muscle growth. From a maximally effective rep standpoint, we're th talking about 60 to 120 maximum effective reps per muscle per week. Now, depending on a person, some, because you can see that like 10 to 20 sets per muscle, that's still a pretty wide range, right? So you have factors that will impact how many sets you should be doing. First, the number of reps per set. As I mentioned earlier, if I'm doing 15 or 20 reps per set, I can still get more my maximally effective reps, but I'm spending so much more energy that I can't do as many sets. If I'm doing sets of 15, 20 reps, I might be able to do 10, 12 sets per muscle per week. So two weekly sessions, that's roughly six, five or six sets for a muscle group per session per week. More than that, because of the trash volume you're doing at the beginning of the set, just to get to those maximally effective reps, I could produce too much cortisol, and if you're natural, you're not gonna be able to recover appropriately from that, especially if you have a high stress level. If you're doing lower reps, then I don't have the, as much non-effective volume, so I can do more sets without causing excessive energy expenditure, or requiring excessive energy expenditure. Second factor you need to consider is your stress level. The more stress you have in your day-to-day -day life, the more cortisol will be elevated on a day-to-day -day basis or chronically. So the less cortisol you can tolerate during your session. Again, refer to my previous videos where I explain why cortisol is the number one enemy of natural gain. First, because it can elevate myostatin. Second, because it increases protein degradation. It also limits glycogen storage. And finally, it can eventually decrease testosterone levels. So the more stress you have in your life, the more you should gravitate toward the 10, 12 sets per muscle per week. Lower stress individuals couldn't go higher on a scale, 15, 17, 20. Also depends on your immune system health. The immune system is what repairs muscle damage. And if your immune system is compromised, either because you have excessive cortisol, because cortisol inhibits the immune system, or because your holder older people have normally a weaker immune system, or you just have a weak immune system naturally, then you won't be able to repair as much muscle damage as someone with a healthy immune system. 
the, so if you have a, a weak immune system, and I'm doing, let's say, 20 sets per muscle per week, I might be causing so much muscle damage that I'm not capable of repairing it in time before the increase in protein synthesis stops. Protein synthesis will be elevated for around 36 hours after your workout. If you have not repaired the damage by then and added more muscle, you likely won't be adding that much muscle from your workout. So if I'm causing too much muscle damage for my immune system to repair, then I might not get growth from my session. Of course, the fourth factor would be anabolic balance. Anabolic balance being the amount of anabolic hormones you have in your body, testosterone, growth hormone, IGF-1, either naturally or enhanced. Someone who is enhanced will obviously be able to tolerate more volume. In that case, they, kind of, they might even be able to tolerate more than 20 sets per muscle per week because protein synthesis is elevated 24-7. But even a natural person, someone with high natural testosterone level, naturally high IGF-1 levels, People in their, like between 18 years of age to 22 years of age, they will be able to tolerate a lot more volume. People who are 25, 30 can still tolerate a decent amount, but lower than 18 to 22. And after that, then you're going to have to decrease volume even more. When you are 50, 60 years of age, IGF-1, growth hormone, testosterone are likely lower, so you need to, uh, to use a lower training volume, so age being the last factor. So these are the factors you need to take into consideration when you're planning training volume. But the, the zone to be training at is 10 to 20 sets per muscle per week. Personally, I prefer to divide that over two or even three weekly sessions. If you do only one session, that's fine, as long as you don't exceed that amount. Per the reason why I prefer to use two sessions per muscle, it's simply from a muscle damage perspective. Uh, because if I'm using, let's say, 20 muscle, 20 sets in one, in one workout, I will cause a large amount of muscle damage, especially if I'm using fairly heavy weight, six to eight reps per set, for example. And I might be causing too much to be able to repair. Yes, I have seven days before I, I hit that muscle again. The problem is that protein synthesis in that muscle is elevated only for 24 to 36 hours. It goes back to baseline in that muscle afterwards. It becomes balanced between the protein degradation. So if I have not repaired and added muscle tissue within that 36 hours window, I'm unlikely to add a significant amount of muscle mass after that. So by using one session with high volume, I might be causing too much muscle damage, especially if I'm older, I have a weaker immune system, or have low anabolic hormones. So that's why I prefer to use two uh, stimulation, or even three in some cases. So that's my answer on about how much volume you should, you should be able to use in your training and what is optimal for muscle growth. Thanks for watching and be sure to watch the other videos because they are just as good, if not better.